Morning sickness is something that has always been associated with pregnancy. In fact, for many women, that's your very first sign that you are pregnant. But just because it's common, it doesn't mean that it's any fun to experience. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what you can do to help with morning sickness. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. You are watching In The Pink and if you're new here, In The Pink means in good health and spirits. So if you like being healthy and happy, make sure you click subscribe because you are in the right place. So morning sickness is extremely common, occurring in about 70 to 80% of pregnant women. But what exactly is morning sickness? And does it happen for every pregnant woman? And is there a way to make it stop? And can morning sickness harm your baby? So we're gonna discuss all of this and more. But before I start, I have a question for you. Are you watching this video because you're pregnant now and you're experiencing morning sickness yourself? Or are you just thinking about getting pregnant? Or is someone that you love experiencing morning sickness? Put that in the comment section down below. And also let me know of any other topics that you want me to talk about in the future as well. Okay, so what is morning sickness? First off, whoever decided that it should be called morning sickness has obviously never been pregnant because it's not just a morning thing. If I were gonna be giving it a name, I would call it like all day, all night, first thing when you wake up, why do I have to feel this way all the time, make it stop already, nothing tastes good, and every single thing makes me vomit sickness. I think that about covers it. So firstly, it doesn't just happen in the morning. Nausea and vomiting in pregnancy can happen any time of the day and night, especially if a specific trigger is present. Morning sickness usually happens in the first trimester, starting around four to five weeks, and then peaking around nine weeks of your pregnancy. In most women, it's gonna lessen in severity and frequency during the second trimester. However, for some, it might stay throughout the entire pregnancy. Now, the exact cause of morning sickness isn't exactly known, but there are several theories. It can be due to the surge of progesterone and estrogen, the pregnancy hormones. Both of these hormones play a role in decreasing gastric emptying time, which is basically how fast food goes down from your stomach. Since food stays in your stomach longer, you might feel more nauseous and vomit some of the contents. There are some risk factors that might make you more likely to experience morning sickness, like genetics. If your mother or your sister experienced morning sickness, you're more likely to experience it too. Other risk factors might be if you're having multiples, like like twins or triplets or more, or if you're more prone to motion sickness. And interestingly enough, if you have a history of migraine headaches, if you experience morning sickness in your previous pregnancies, you're gonna be more likely to exhibit the same kind of symptoms in your current pregnancies. And something important to keep in mind is that if you have just found out that you're pregnant and know from your previous pregnancies that you are gonna get morning sickness, you're gonna be able to keep these symptoms under control better if you start treatment for it before you even start to experience symptoms. Now, whatever the cause of morning sickness may be, nausea and vomiting is not necessarily a bad thing. Most of the time, it's part of a normal, healthy pregnancy, but it's also normal to wonder if it can affect the health of your growing baby, and the answer is, for the most part, no. In fact, morning sickness is often a reassuring sign that the pregnancy is going well. Now, there have been some studies that have shown that severe morning sickness might increase your chances of that your baby might have a low birth weight. Other studies have shown that it doesn't, but without a doubt, morning sickness isn't fun for the mother to experience and there are definitely some things that you can do to mitigate the symptoms. So the first thing I want to talk about are lifestyle modifications. So these are small adjustments that you can make as you go about your day that can reduce your symptoms. So number one, avoid triggers. So earlier I mentioned triggers for morning sickness. Pregnancy can make you hyper aware of your surroundings and it's like you have heightened senses. So strong odors from the smell of specific type of foods can make you nauseated. Sometimes triggers can be foods that you normally love. So try to figure out what foods trigger your morning sickness and then try to avoid them if possible. For me, I really struggled with the smell of cooking butter of any kind. Sometimes the triggers aren't even foods. Another smell I couldn't stand in my first pregnancy was the smell of gasoline. So whatever your triggers are, just try to avoid them if possible. If you're going out to eat somewhere, a nice trick is to try to avoid sitting near the kitchen of the restaurant. At home, keep the windows open in your house so that fresh air can enter and make it less stuffy. Also, too much humidity can trigger morning sickness. Loud noises can also make you 
feel nauseated, and then driving and flickering light can trigger it. So avoid those when you can. When you eat, don't eat until you are really, really full. Try to just eat enough so that you don't feel hungry. But on the flip side, an empty stomach can also trigger morning sickness. So don't go too long between meals. Ideally, eat multiple small meals rather than three large meals to help with a balanced digestion. Dry crackers are often really helpful, especially if you have an empty stomach. Keep them with you in your purse and then also keep some by your bed in case you feel nauseated first thing in the morning or in the middle of the night. Make sure that you stay hydrated, but don't drink a lot large glass of water with your meal. Instead, you can have a big glass of water like a half an hour before you eat. That way you can, again, try to avoid making your stomach too full. When you eat, choose foods that are low fat and high in protein and carbohydrates. Fat can trigger secretion of hormones that can slow the transition of food in your stomach and then make you feel more nauseated later on. Number three, carry scents with you. In the same way that a smell of something foul can make you feel nauseated, the smell of something minty fresh or fruity can have the opposite effect. So you could carry a mint candy or an orange or even a fresh lemon in your purse that you can sniff whenever you feel nauseated. And I know it sounds weird, but it actually helps. At home, you could buy an oil diffuser with a scent that calms you so that your whole house can smell appealing to you. Also, ginger or peppermint tea can calm your stomach. Number four, drink mildly sour fluids. So ginger ale and lemonade are some sour fluids that might ease your symptoms. Lemonade has neutralizing acids, which can help you to digest faster. These can both help neutralize the acids in your stomach, which can help with digestion. Number five, avoid bad eating habits. So don't lie down immediately after you eat. I would recommend waiting a couple of hours. This is because the muscles above your stomach that prevent the reflux of food from your stomach into your esophagus is more relaxed because of your hormones. And if you lay down, that could worsen your morning sickness. Number six, take your medications as instructed. Now, prenatal vitamins include iron supplements and iron supplements can upset your stomach. And if it does, your doctor might advise you to take it with meals or after meals. And if that doesn't help, talk to your old be about other options. There are formulations of prenatal vitamins that can be gentler on your stomach. Number seven is other less known interventions. That includes like acupuncture, acupressure, and even counseling might be helpful for some women, especially if the vomiting episodes are associated with a lot of anxiety or feeling extreme sadness from it. Sometimes lifestyle modifications aren't enough to help you with your morning sickness. And if, and if that is the case for you, there's no reason for you to keep that to yourself. You don't have to suffer through it because there are options that your OB can help you with. Starting with, first off, I wanna talk about vitamin B6 and doxylamine. Vitamin B6 is over the counter and it can lessen nausea, while doxylamine can lessen vomiting. Now you can actually get a prescription of vitamin B6 and doxylamine together in the form of a brand name called Diclegis and it can really help lessen the effects of morning sickness. Or you can just pick them up individually in the over the counter section of your pharmacy. But again, talk to your OB first. Number two, antihistamines. There are some forms of nausea and vomiting associated with motion sickness and antihistamines block the receptors that are responsible for feeling dizzy and for the nausea. So taking like a Benadryl or a Meclizine, for example, can lessen nausea and vomiting in pregnancy too. Just be aware that a side effect of some antihistamines can be drowsiness. So if your OB has decided to have you take them, make sure that you're not gonna be driving or do anything that would require you to be completely alert. Number three, prescription medications. If everything that I've talked about does not help you, your OB might consider writing you a prescription for medication like Phenergan, Reglan, or Zofran to name a few. Now Reglan lessens the gastric emptying times while Zofran blocks the receptors for serotonin which mediate nausea and vomiting. Your OB will want to discuss the risks and benefits of these medications, particularly Zofran, which some studies have shown might slightly increase your baby's chance of having either a cleft palate or a heart anomaly if taken early in pregnancy. But other studies have shown that the absolute risk was actually very, very low. So you want to talk to your OB about those risks. Now, even though morning sickness is extremely common in pregnancy, there are scenarios where it can cause complications because for some women, morning sickness may progress into something called hyperemesis gravidarum. And this is where the vomiting episodes happen too frequently to where women lose more than 5% of their body weight. They can become very dehydrated and feel very weak. They can also develop vitamin deficiencies and electrolyte imbalances. Hyperemesis gravidarum is uncommon. It only affects about 2% of pregnant women. So if you're experiencing severe vomiting episodes,
episodes to where you can't even eat or drink anything, make sure you call your OB. They might consider admitting you to the hospital to rehydrate you and then also to correct any electrolyte imbalances if you have any. So once you're in the hospital, you'll be given medications to help with the nausea and vomiting and then they'll do a workup to see if they need to do anything else to help you to get better. Hyperemesis gravidarum can develop in pregnancies complicated by hyperthyroidism and it also can be associated with molar pregnancy which is a non-viable pregnancy. Also if you're carrying twins or triplets or more, it's more likely for you to develop this as well. So if you have concerns because you cannot keep your fluids down, you can't keep your food down, make sure you call your OB. Finally, please, please don't smoke weed to relieve your morning sickness and don't take experimental drugs or drugs that aren't approved by the FDA for pregnant women. Also remember that even if you do all these treatments, it might not completely eliminate morning sickness. Like I said earlier, it's a part of a normal and healthy pregnancy. The goal is to lessen the severity so that you can eat and drink enough for you and your baby's health and for it to not be too disrupting to your everyday life and hopefully it will disappear by your second trimester. But hey, if you are new to Diane in the Pink, I've actually made an entire pregnancy series, one video for each week of pregnancy where I talk about baby development, symptoms that you might be experiencing, what to expect at your next OB appointment, basically everything that you need to know about that week in pregnancy. I talk about that in that week's video. So I am going to leave a link to that playlist right here. Click on that and I will see you over there.